Welcome to AI in Practice. This time we want to focus on prototyping, actually specifically on tools for prototyping. In today's techy and technical framework driven world, it's more and more important to have actually a human centric view, also in terms of the prototypization. You know about our context that matters, right? Desirability, taking desire and social and cultural, viability, taking economics, and feasible, taking technology aspects also into account of designing your AI solution and product. In product development, obviously, there is this conventional wisdom of you know either quality, time to market, or cost have to be compromised. Others say like good, fast, cheap, pick two of them, right? The challenge is how can we make it very efficient, cheap, to deliver high quality, good, um, of products in an industry leading pace, fast. So that's a bit of the matter, um, which also is for you important when you're building prototypes along the line of your products in the AI. AI prototypes can be somehow structured along two different angles, the phases and the prototypes part. On the prototypes part, the question is about what do you want to actually prototype? The interaction or the value? And from the phases in the development, how mature you want to be, is it the vision or is it the model? That means if you want to quantify and test the interaction along the line of the vision, you should ask the question, how should this work? Um, and if you want to prototype your model in the interaction, how could this work? And if you want to in, uh, quantify the value, uh, you may ask question about what should we work and what should we predict? And do people actually want this in a visionary step? So that means depending on your goal, on your aspiration, which you want to you know, quantify, prototyping helps you, you know, building, adding probabilities to it. There are different types of, of prototypes. On the one side, we have the input and output. Let's, let's say, create samples of inputs and outputs and a mean to test the value of the service. Is somebody clicking on a page or not? The human is AI. Uh, that means allowing, you know, abstracting from the actual task of prediction, but validated or not, you know, a prediction is valuable if it's possible, right? It's like a bit of mock-up. An extension of that is the Wizard of Oz experiment, a demo of a vision of experience that you want to do with an interaction testing. You may not even have a technical uh, body around it, but it can be a mock-up and, and um, something totally abstracted there. Data and visualization storytelling is, is in, if you're being very precise, not actually prototyping, but it's, it's a great way in order to slice the elephant and have a place in terms of the toolkits in viewing data, distributing data, and slicing and dicing the elephant. A third one is the you know, heuristic systems that, that you employ and make in. It's maybe not 100% you know, working, but it gives a glimpse of an output, right? So it's maybe not the best in brief and state of the art model that is equipped for, for your task, but it gives already a bit of a notion of the capability. Similar and connected to constrained scenarios. Like you pick a very narrow scenario for a real coded prototype. So the given aspects of what you want to test, there are typical types of AI prototypes to be considered. And there is tool out there that helps you and makes it very easy for you to get a glimpse with your clients, but also get a glimpse with the technology. If we start from the customer, um, obviously, and the user, you know, there's great prototyping um, uh, tool stacks out there. To name just a few with regards to the user interface and user design, Figma is, I guess, you know, the only one, you know, in a lot of use cases have been, you know, tested and designed by the Figma system. InVision Studio is also something that is most likely um, and more often being used to add design, making a product, making an app. 
all aligning also with Adobe XD, which is a back-to-base system for putting uh, prototypes and some kinds of interaction transition together. So designing your app, your application, your service, these kinds of what we call also local toolings in designing first markups makes it very easy for you to show to clients, to customers, to your users of the value of your systems. I've mentioned already low-code tools, especially in AI. Low-code and flow-based um, toolings help you in designing the machine learning aspects. Whether you're talking about the Azure Machine Learning Studio, which is like an online cloud service where you can drag and drop data sets, components and machine learning. Whether you were talking about RapidMiner, an open source and, and commercial use um, tool stack, um, which provides you to, you know, recommendation engines, machine learning systems, uh, entirely written by uh, flow-based uh, engineering, along the line also with NIME, similar pendant as free and open source analytics and reporting platform, which allows in a very easy UI to visualize, model, manage and deploy, but also optimize your models without touching primarily main code base. So low or no code tools in the development of algorithms such as RapidMiner, NIME, AMLs, um, help you, you know, building the first models without touching the hardcore at the sense of the data and the code. In addition to that, obviously all cloud providers, all bigger cloud providers such as Google, AWS, Azure, Alibaba, Amazon and so on, provide certain kinds of dApps and abstraction layers on the machine learning systematic. One of the most either hippest things and concept in AI and machine learning is the notion of AutoML. Um, AutoML means like the system, the cloud automatically, you know, trains high quality models according your, to your business requirements and the data you provide to the systems. Google Cloud AutoML, but also in Amazon and, and Azure world, you know, existing these kinds of AutoML services with regards to text, images and so on. If you dive a bit deeper into the code base itself, let's assume in Python, you know, Google Callup and JupyterLab and Jupyter Notebooks help you somehow, you know, to launch certain kinds of services, implement and combine documentation, as well as first prototype implementation, even though on GPUs at scale to a very cheap price. So if you want to test out certain kind of aspects in a very early manner, those kinds of Collabs, Jupyter, Notebooks, AutoML, SageMaker and so on will help you and accelerate you in your prototyping phase without spending a fortune of um, budget into IT of architecture and, and infrastructure. Same goes actually with the libraries associated to that. Whites and biases, hugging face and radio are great things. Especially hugging face uh, shows that the community and the data science platform is such a strong, strong value add for accessing and reusing of open source uh, machine learning models at a significant scale. Hugging face, you have to check out. It's an awesome company, but it's also an awesome community that helps you implementing open source codes. Last but not least, obviously building some kinds of the visualization, you know, and helps you a bit of screenable aspects. Um, I guess you, you, you need to test out Streamlit and a bit of Plotly as a dash, right? Which is an open source that makes interactive quality crafts and, you know, building dashboards um, and or shareable web apps. Have a go. I guess there's a lot of out there doing that. Plotly and Streamlit are quite, quite nice and fun in the same uh, to explore together. Last but not least, obviously the question, where do you get actually state-of-the-art models? Where do you get state-of-the-art data and maybe best practices? The open source community in AI and machine learning is fascinating and amazing. As you actually also access these kinds of, of MOOCs um, online for free, and there are a plethora of platforms out there. To name a few, Papers with Code is an awesome community now already and, and matters AI research realm. It's community-centric approach and brings together per task state-of-the-art papers along with the line with the implementation and models. Kegel is an awesome community in accessing somehow best practices 
uh, and data for specific uh, tasks you want to compete with for commercial and or just for your own learning journey. Have a go on Kegel, an online community that somehow connects data scientists, but also the collaboration and best practice sharing on implementation of certain kinds of tasks. Last but not least, Archives is, a, is an awesome resource in order to actually access the different paper and the fundaments of, of the scientific realms of articles. Archivex is a, a great resource in, in identifying what's the latest and greatest in AI and what kind of papers and what's the foundation of these models that are used in Kaggle and all the other sort of platforms. Have a go on Archivex. It's an enormous valuable resource uh, for, um, for getting motivated but also getting a glimpse of state of the art. Last but not least, obviously, you know, the entire machine learning life cycle is a bit more broad and encompasses a variety right, of different tool stack where a, a large, to a large extent, open source plays the vital importance. From IDE support like Jupyter, from the program languaging like Python or uh, R, from the analyticals and algorithm frameworks like the PyTorch, uh, Keras, uh, Spacey, and so on, for the model management, like, I don't know, Azure ML or RapidMiner, from the pipelining, like Kafka or Spark, which is pretty dope, uh, from the API-centric, like, you know, AWS API gateways, or from the user interfaces, um, Power BI, typical Spotfire, Tableau, Clicks, uh, typical aspects in there, to actually the DevOps aspects in terms of, you know, talking about Jira, talking about DevOps, Elastics, and so on. So open source plays a vital part in the AI and machine learning development, and you can use and start very lean in getting a glimpse on that. That means open source is a driver in the AI, but also in the, your prototyping phase. So to sum up the what and why of prototyping, you need to define what. So what do you want to test? A low fidelity prototype, fast and cheap, you know, can be made very quickly, sometimes even paper-based, or a high fidelity prototype, so like a realistic functioning, you know, prototype, which actually, you know, somehow gets a good con demonstration in front of stakeholders or maybe your investors. And the why? Because prototyping saves the time, it saves the efforts, and it gives you feedback of your customers, of your, be, uh, of your users, very, very fast. And this is what you want in developing and prototyping your AI application. Have a look at the notes, obviously, for supplemented material.